Hi, my name is Archie Fernando. I'm one of the urology consultants at Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital. And uh, this is a short excerpt from a case of the week presentation I did for our Friday morning teaching last week. Um, and we hope you might find it useful. So the case is of a young gentleman who has a residual mass following chemotherapy for metastatic testicular cancer. And we had to have a conversation about uh, the rationale behind treatment, the uh, significant risks of surgery, the approach to surgery, whether we would do it open or robotically, and we had to talk about timing for the operation as well. And what was unusual about this case was I had to do the whole consultation via telephone. Um, and that's something that I haven't used in this sort of a situation. Um, with these kind of patients who've often been left, uh, let down by their disease, uh, several times, it's so important to build trust and to build a connection. Um, they also haven't seen our service and our setup. And I really wanted to get it right. And that was really the case that got me thinking about telephone consulting. Now, we've all seem to have moved the majority of our consulting to telephone. And I don't know about you, but I haven't had any uh, formal training in telephone consulting. Um, and the inclination is to think that it's very similar to face-to-face, -to -face, uh, but actually that doesn't seem to be the case if you look at the data. Now, the next uh, slide is a word cloud about some of the pros of telephone consulting. So you might want to think for yourself what some of those things might be. I think that offering telephone consulting more frequently is really a step towards true patient-centered care. Getting the patient to leave their house or their work and travel all the way to the hospital to sit in a crowded waiting room where their name is called out loud for everyone to hear and then have quite sensitive information discussed with them and then be put back out into the waiting area has never really struck me as true patient-centered care. And you can see some of these um, other things like cost and efficiency uh, might be some of the pros of more um, frequent telephone consulting. Now this is something about the cons of telephone consulting and rightly there are some reservations about uh, the use of telephone consulting and what you find when you look at the data is that a lot of these reservations are actually from medics themselves. Um, a lot of the patients even older patients prefer telephone consulting if it's done well. And in fact, the data shows that there is no detriment to clinical uh, utility or patient satisfaction if telephone consulting is done well. And of course, as with anything, that is the key is to do it well. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to do telephone consulting well? And there is a wealth of data out there which you can have a look at for yourself uh, but these are seven quick, easy to implement tips uh, that I found very helpful. Um, and so I'm sharing that with you. Um, so the first thing to say is that if you tell the patient that you're going to ring them at 11.15 a.m., it's very unlikely that you are going to be able to ring them at that exact moment. And so it makes more sense to give patients a time window. So a one hour or two hour slot in which they will refer receive a phone call, then it's much more likely that you will ring them when you say that you're going to and get the um, consultation started off on the right foot. 90% of the patients who are dissatisfied with telephone consult consulting are unhappy because the, their expectation of the phone call was different to the clinician's expectation of that phone call. And so setting the agenda at the beginning cuts this off. What you do is you say something like, um, I'm ringing you today to discuss the result of your biopsy and talk about what we do next. And then that gives the patient the opportunity to say, actually, I also wanted to talk about the fact that I'm getting up four times at night to pee. And then you can add that to your agenda and make sure you cover it during the phone call, which makes for a much more satisfying uh, consultation for the patient. The other thing about setting the agenda is approaching it really in the same way that you would a face-to-face -face consultation. So making sure that you're going to take a very thorough history, you're going to get the clinical background, you're going to speak about symptoms, 
And sometimes it helps just to write out the things you want to cover to make sure you don't miss anything through the phone call. Data shows that um, people can very accurately predict what someone is doing on the other end of the phone just from their voice alone. So they can tell whether you are looking away, whether you're yawning, whether you're slouching or whether you're smiling. And so telecharisma is this whole thing about sitting comfortably, um, preferably using head, headsets so that you're not sort of muffled in your voice and smiling where appropriate so that you create a kind of warm and welcoming tone to your voice that sets uh, a nice sort of scene for the telephone consultation. The patient can't see you and so it becomes more important than ever to really explain everything you're doing. So you say something like, oh, I'm just going to type in what you just said to me so that they know what you're doing and they don't hear the typing and think, oh, she's probably just sending an email while talking to me. Using your words is also about lay language. When the patient is with you, you can tell whether they're um, confused or whether they might not be understanding, but you can't really do that over the phone. And so it becomes much more important to kind of to, to use lay terms. Use your words also applies to um, conveying emotion. So patient can't see that you are empathizing with them. And so um, I find using certain phrases to convey how I'm feeling and that I'm there with them in, the, in their emotion is also um, helpful. We, we all do this, we all do active listening when we're um, in a face-to-face -face consultation. It means something slightly different in telephone consulting. Um, you have to try and listen for the tone of the patient. So if the patient's gone a little bit quiet, then it may be that they need a moment. It may be that they're confused and they have a question. So it's important to pick up on those cues by listening hard to how the patient is, um, is speaking or is behaving. Mirroring the patient's speech also helps, apparently, for a smoother consultation. So if the patient is speaking fast, you can speak fast. But if the patient is speaking quite slowly uh, or using certain phraseology, then trying to mirror that makes for a smoother connection. Active listening is also about avoiding the temptation, and I do this a lot, uh, to complete the patient's sentences, because that creates a very one-sided conversation to them. And then of course, the same thing that you would do in a face-to-face, -face, using sort of checkpoints to make sure that everything has been understood and it's clear before you move on to talking about more things. Documentation. It is important that we document for ourselves, but this is about inviting the patient to document. So at the beginning of the call, giving the patient the opportunity to get themselves a pen or a paper, pen and piece of paper so that they can jot something down. Um, often patients in a face-to-face -face will ask you to write down certain things, uh, long terms that they may not have understood. And of course they can't do that over the phone. So give them the opportunity uh, to, uh, to stop you, get you to repeat things or spell things if they need to, um, and they will then feel comfortable to do that. Ending the consultation well is just as important as all of the other tips. And I think um, giving them a summary at the end with the plan and also what to expect. So I'm going to send out a letter, you'll receive that letter in a couple of weeks time and so will your GP and I will make you a follow-up appointment. Also asking them if there's anything else that they needed to talk about is a good thing. They say that uh, you shouldn't feel any pressure to make a decision uh, just because you're on the phone. You can say to the patient, and patients don't mind this, um, I just need a, little, uh, a couple of days to think about it, so I will ring you back, or I uh, would like to discuss that with my colleagues, and so let's make another phone consult for next week. Patients like it if you sign off in a familiar way. It was lovely to chat. Um, I hope you found the consultation helpful. Look forward to uh, speaking to you soon. Something like that. So those were a few tips that really helped me build a connection with this patient that I really didn't think was possible over the telephone. Um, and so uh, we hope that you will find these tips helpful too.